Hi, today we're going to talk to you about evaluating web pages. We're going to talk about five criteria that you can look at. First one we're looking for is accuracy. Okay, is it accurate? Is it indeed accurate? How can we find out? Well, some things you can look at is who wrote the page? Can you contact that person? What was the purpose of the document and why was it produced? Why is it put out there? Is the person who wrote the document qualified? I'm an English teacher. I'm qualified to talk to you about reliable sources, but am I qualified to talk to you about open heart surgery? No. So that's something that you need to look at. Up next, we have the authority of the web documents. Okay. Who published the document and is it separate from the webmaster? You can check the domain name of the document. What institution publishes this document? And does the publisher list his or her qualifications? Let's go a little bit further with that one. How can we interpret that? What credentials are used for the authors? What does that mean? My credentials. I have a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. If I'm going to put something on the web regarding curriculum and instruction or teaching English, people are going to want to know that I have that credential of a master's degree. They're going to want to know that I have a teaching certification. So they are my credentials. Okay. Where is the document published? They want you to check the URL domain. The domain is the three little letters after a website address. If it's .gov, it means it comes from the government. If it's .edu, it comes from a school and so on and so on. .com comes from commercial. So you have to watch commercial sites because often they do want to sell you something. So you can look at the domain name to determine whether or not you should look at it or use it. What about the objectivity? What goals or objectives does that page meet? And whose goals and objectives does it meet? Is the information detailed? Are there any opinions expressed by the author? Let's go a little bit further into that. You can determine if the page is a mask for advertising. And if it is, then the information might be biased. Have you ever gone to a page where pretty much it's advertising all over? They're selling things. They're not there to give you information. They're there to sell things. You can look at a web page as you would an infomercial on television. Why was it written and who was it written for? Look at why people are doing things and putting information out there. Next up, we have the currency of web documents. When was it produced? When was it updated? Is it updated? I also see a typo right there. I don't have a question mark after update it. We're going to let that go. How up to date are the links? If there are any links, have you ever gone to a page and you clicked on all of the links and they're dead? What that means is that that web page has not uh, been updated lately. Okay which means no one's taking care of it. So you need to watch the information on that web page. Let's go a little bit deeper into that. Here we go. I was kind of talking about it. How many of those links on that page are dead? Are the links current? Are they updated regularly? Is someone going in there and checking them? And is the information on the page outdated? If it's outdated, you don't want to use it. All right, what else can we talk about? The coverage of web documents. Are the links evaluated and do they complement the document's theme? Okay, if we're on a page researching reliable sources, finding something there about making citations would complement because making citations is what you do when you want to show somebody where you got your source. However, maybe if there was a link there to the author's pastimes, you might question that. Why would that be there? Why would that complement? It doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with that topic. Is the page all images? Is there a balance of text and images? Is the information presented cited correctly? If they got this information from someone else, are they telling you where they got it? If a page requires special software, if you have to download something to view the information, how much are you going to miss if you don't have the software? Is it really necessary to have that software? Is it free? Is there a fee? Do you have to pay to obtain the information? I don't want you to do that. 
If you are a scholar, maybe working on your doctorate, that's a different subject. But in high school, I don't want you paying for information. Is there an option when you're looking at the web page? Can you go for text only or frames? Or is there a suggested browser for better viewing? Our courses at VOL work better on Chrome. Um, uh, sometimes if you're using your mobile phone, you might see that you can switch between a mobile view and a regular web view too. Okay. And that's important. If people are making sure that you can read their information on a number of devices, everything is probably updated. Okay. They're keeping up with the technology and that's a good sign too. Okay. We're going to put it all together. Now, what are we looking for? All right. Accuracy. If your page lists the author and institution that published the page and provides a way of contacting him or her and that's a good sign. If your page lists the author credentials and its domain is preferred and there's the list of preferred domains, that's a good sign. What about objectivity? If your page provides accurate information with limited advertising and is objective or fair in presenting information, another good sign. And what about currency? If your page is current and updated regularly as stated on the page and the links, if any, are also up to date, another good sign. Coverage. If you can view the information properly, you're not limited to fees. You don't have to worry, worry about browser technology or a software requirement, then you're on the right track. If you can find a web page with all of these five things, then you've probably found a web page that could be of value for your research. If you have any questions, make sure you contact me. Good luck.